Hey guys, uh, today we are here at uh, University of Stuttgart from our bar rocketry team. Uh, we are visiting our fellow student team High End from uh, Stuttgart University, as I said. And uh, we want to talk about rockets today uh, because they have some quite cool uh, tech stuff going on here as well. They currently have the altitude record for um, student rocketry. And therefore we wanted to get some knowledge from them, exchange some knowledge. They are also developing Type 5 pressure vessels as we do. And they were also part of the DLR STEM program, as we were as well with our project Cryosphere, which has just ended in summer. So yeah, we'll give you a quick tour and then you can see what they are up to. Uh, hello. <laughs> hey, uh, my name is Louis. Uh, I'm currently the project leader of Project Nexus, um, our bi-liquid propulsion uh, system or project. Um, I joined VAR Rocketry, our association, roughly two and a half years, uh, no, sorry, three and a half years ago uh, when I started studying at TU Munich. Um, I'm currently doing my bachelor thesis in mechanical engineering and I'm transitioning to my master's in, in April. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm a, a student of the University of Stuttgart, member of uh, High End. I'm currently working on building the third version of our North Rocket our first North rocket that we launched in 2023, uh, April 2023, we set the new world altitude record for student-built hybrid rockets at 64 kilometers. And um, we're currently in the transition phase of going from our large-scale hybrid sounding rocket to a more technological advanced bi-liquid technology, bi-liquid propelled rocket, um, while also following through with some side projects and in uh, additional developments in solid propelled rocket engines. Uh, yeah, um, we had some quite interesting projects. So before I became the project leader of our bi-liquid project, Project Nexus, I was the Aerostructures team leader of Project Cryosphere. This is the one you can see on my on my pullover. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, that's where we build a hybrid propelled rocket. And yeah, we aim for breaking the amateur European altitude record, which we unfortunately weren't able to do. Uh, first of all, because we had uh, some propulsion issues during the during the launch, and second of all, uh, because uh, our friends from Stuttgart were faster <laughs> to break their own record, and now the the current record stands at 64 kilometers, right? Yes, yeah. 64.4 kilometers. Awesome. <laughs> What do you have in your hands, Ludwig? This is a Type 5 Panzer. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's way lighter than the aluminium one. Yeah. Therefore, you can save up to 7 kilograms with this rocket. And it is very light. We will fly that as well. And Euro 2024. Awesome. Philip. What are you doing? What am I doing? Uh, I'm, I'm talking to him about, about a bit of whining. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not creative. We're just currently having problems with um, applying that to the machine. And, uh, uh, yeah, we're figuring it out. Uh, currently, we were uh, whining with Titanic Bike. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I think it's quite interesting that we're both transitioning to, to buy liquids right now. Mm. Um, so, well, what do you think, what were the, or, I mean, you are currently in the transitioning process. Uh, we started, I think, it was two years ago with the project. So, 
what what do you think are the the yeah most challenges right now for for this transition in terms of knowledge and facilities maybe yeah. so as a student organization there's always the big issue of people leaving and mm. people coming new and if we had to be honest some issues about transferring knowledge in between the teams the new team and the old team the old team was mainly focused on getting everything ready for launch and launching the big rockets while the new team missed getting on the project because they were too late but we had no or not enough help from the old team with the new one and I'm currently as one of a member from the old team still being present working on that transition and they are developing their own stuff they're doing a great work and um, we're sort of working on these projects together and in helping with experience that we gathered with the old project in particular the manufacturing techniques mm -hmm. I think that is the main issue because the calculations, you can learn them, you even do learn them in university, but manufacturing a pressure vessel, going through the testing process, yeah. that is the big issue. What would you say was, for your ex in your experience, uh, yeah. the issues? Yeah, so first of all, the, the point you addressed with the with members leaving the team is one of the biggest issues mm -hmm. I would assume as well. Um, not exactly um, directly prone to bi-liquid or hybrid propulsion, but a general issue at all. Yeah. Uh, especially because we, um, yeah, we joined this one-year development cycle now. If we want to be part of a competition every year, we have to mm. build a new system. I mean, technically, we wouldn't need to build a new system every year, but we want to. And there you need to train new members each year. Of course, you have some members that stay longer. But we've seen in our university, especially also in other projects, like, for example, the racing teams and so on, um, that they yeah, tend to have really active members for one year that put in a lot of work and then they are leaving the team slowly and transitioning the, the knowledge. Yeah, so knowledge transfer is really important, especially when it comes to testing. And uh, I think yeah, when it comes to the, the challenges between hybrids and bi-liquids, I think for bi-liquids our yeah, main challenge was to um, not imp not improve on, on those safety concepts but enhance them in the, in the way that they have to be more elaborate on storing propellants and being safe about all operations because you have yeah, two highly combustible materials or liquids uh, next to each other and um, especially with our testing at campus we had to stick to some higher safety standards than at the DLR facilities um, because yeah, also other people are around at, at the university. Yeah, the test bench, we are really lucky with that one um, because uh, we are able to test our engines at campus. Uh, actually, that was one of our key requirements in the, back when we started the BioLiquid project. So with Cryosphere, our hybrid system, we were always or always had the issue that we need to travel to facilities like DLR Lampolshausen or Traun, yeah. where we have to test our, back then it was 10 kN uh, engine, uh, and we are not able to test 10 kN at campus. So we scaled our yeah, bi-liquid engine down a bit in terms of thrust and we went down to 3.5 kN roughly. Um, but even being able to test 3.5 kN at the university yeah, grounds yeah, is... Yeah. Uh, currently, no, actually, yeah, we are actually really happy about yeah. uh, the facilities at the university and they are actually expanding the, themselves right now. So Great. they are building, they bought this old um, hangar where they tested uh, fighter engines back then and they are building up this facility to incorporate 40 kN tests uh, of bi-liquid engines. So that's wow. that's a really nice development, but it's I'm far jealous. ahead in the future, <laughs> uh, so we stick to the... But I mean, with such a team, you always have to think about what's going on in five or ten years, because yeah, you want true. it to have a future. One of the main tasks of these teams is to teach students yeah. something that they could not learn in university, that the university cannot spend the time on teaching us. But these student teams, they then are so successful in what they're doing that they generate attention and attention gives us opportunities. Yeah. These opportunities are getting the university to do the stuff you want them to yeah. do, <laughs> like building up a big yeah. test bench. And we actually are trying to build a small-scale test bench or be able to fire small-scale engines on university grounds, but that is in the making and that will be a difficult process. So far we only tested at the DLR Lampolshausen and with our 15 or 
20 kilonewton initial thrust, 15 kilonewton average thrust, large scale hybrid. That was the only facility you can do that safely in Germany, really, or at this at DLR. Uh, in 2019, I started, and it was amazing how fast you can learn the new stuff, even Absolutely. though you've never heard the lecture. So, I've done the uh, aerothermodynamic simulations of the North rocket, and for that, I haven't heard heat transfer in university mm -hmm. courses, but I had to do the calculations. So you try to teach it yourself, and even though you do some mistakes at first, and you get into the exam and you know, oh, I've done that at high end, oh, I know, I've done that too. And, well, that's half as bad as what I did for high end. So. Yeah, I think also the what I what I experience is that the learning curve in the beginning is so steep. Mm -hmm. So um, you can, yeah try to uh, get knowledge in different aspects and you learn really fast in those different yeah, topics absolutely. and then the learning curve flattens off and then you need to decide if you want to go deeper into one subject or yeah. not. What but was the main thing that you learned at, at VAR? Uh, to try stuff out. <laughs> to try so, <laughs> yeah, no, actually, because... Um, <laughs> I mean, that's generally a university thing, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I think in university you learn more like to think every... I mean, you have to solve the problem on the paper, and then you have one value that is either right or not right. And then something else by trying stuff out. But <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, no. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, no, and then in bar, I, I learned, or in rocketry in general, I learned that it's it's absolutely uh, required to do calculations beforehand, but mm -hmm. it's yeah equally important to test stuff afterwards and to evaluate your calculations and maybe not uh, take half a year to sit in front of the paper and then build it and yeah you, you think oh no no now it's not working but maybe start with one month and then build a subscale version test it and see if you're at the right ballpark and then you can develop stuff and yeah it's so like the process of a, of a component or of a system and also the team structure right? and yeah and it, it comes close to I, I would say companies or startup vibes I would say so it, it does it does I would yeah. say yeah. one of the other main things that I've learned at high end, or at the student team, was there's no rocket that ever flew without duct tape inside. Yeah, true. <laughs> and yeah, uh, that's true. That's just a fact. And then you go into companies after after your studies, and you see, oh well. And the rockets still don't fly without duct tape. The rockets still don't <laughs> fly without duct tape, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty I much. Mean, I mean, um, it is a process, and, and verifying everything is. Uh, the most difficult part. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the most valuable experience, I'd say. Yeah. You're also kicked off a solid project, which is called Hydra, if I'm correct. Yes. So Hydra was the originally an idea for our youngest members to test out the skills and learn them in a subscale project. While the main team of mainly people at the end of their bachelors and at the beginning of their masters were focused on the north, the, the north manufacturing mainly. Because when you enter a project two years after it started, it's difficult to add development work. But the development work is where you learn a lot. And I think that was very successful to have that little project as continuing in parallel. We helped them, they helped us. And with knowledge and with manufacturing aids. And that was great. But there were also always some issues with, with knowledge transfer. And uh, But overall, that was the start of Hydra and then the new team took off and really developed their own propellants, their own engines, their own rocket, had a first unsuccessful launch but later redeemed themselves with a very very successful launch at, at Munching in 2023 up to 2.3 kilometers in altitude. That's insane, so that was their second attempt and already the a full attempt. success. Yeah. Apart from the main shoot, uh, parachute not deploying correctly, Still, the rocket was recovered uh, in one piece and it was a great success for them. And they're the ones kicking off Hydra 3 now with an even bigger engine, more advanced propellant development and also more complex structures incorporating wound and wind, uh, wounded uh, hull segments and um, carbon fiber pieces where in the past they used mainly glass fibers and incorporating the knowledge that we've acquired during the uh, STEM 2 project, during our North project, to the small scale uh, now, and then continuing it up and transferring the knowledge to their bi-liquid rocket as well. Well, how 
how's it going with your solid development and, and your solid rocket development? Was it, is it a platform to have more frequent launches in general? It's, well, it's, it's somehow yes, but it started off, of course, as this platform. It's called VAR Experimental Solid Platform. So we wanted to really have a platform which is capable of launching a few times a year with short turnaround times and also very small budget needed for these launch campaigns as we saw from Chrysphere as well as from Nixus that the yeah, campaign costs can be yeah. an immense part of their whole expenses. But unfortunately we don't have the opportunity to manufacture our own engines because we don't have a Sprengmeister at our university. So we have to look something else up there. Until now, we are only flying with CRTS engines. And yeah, getting engines from our friends and other student associations. Also, as you already yeah, mentioned, also looking forward to having um, launches at a competition. We applied for Spaceport America Cup oh, this cool. year and looking forward to launch there. With what platform do you want to launch there? Next we season? want to need still the solid project. Okay. We want to use the rocket we originally built, mm -hmm. which has the same diameter as Nixus. A lot of components is actually copied from Nixus for capability of just throwing in parts for mixes of te to test it. But yeah, then we started and the members started thinking and now it's a two-stage project. Wow, <laughs> dream, we, dream big, I'd say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, we went smaller because we don't need was the, the original bigger... Plan. <laughs> no, we don't need the bigger diameter of mixes mm -hmm. to fit in our engine because we don't have pressure vessels, we don't have valves and so on, so we yeah, shortened the diameter to 140 millimeters and yeah, have a stage separation at one kilometer and an apogee of nine if everything great. goes right. And incorporating that complex procedure of a stage uh, separation is a great learning experience as well, I'd say. Definitely, that's yeah. one of the points you could not learn on a bi-liquid because no. it would be just too much complexity yeah, in one system. Of course, and then having both of these systems uh, Bi-liquid propelled for technology development regarding engine combustion chambers and the fluid systems and the solid to develop structures to develop the separation mechanism and all of that and, and even recovery testing. That's great, the great capability for you too. Exactly, that's yeah. what we're looking forward to. Then at some point we probably can throw both capabilities in one rocket and then we would have a big ass bi-liquid there. That would be great, yeah. Two stage bi-liquid, dream big <laughs> <laughs> I mean you have to start dreaming, yeah, then certainly, probably it certainly. gets real at some point. Great.